Okay, so I'm going to shrink us up again, and we're going to look at uh, part two of the brief history of astronomy, looking at time and navigation. And this is a, a fairly simple device, but it's quite accurate because there's a little hole here, mm -hmm. and the object is you point it at the sun, and the sun would then make a, you know, a little dot down here, and uh, by doing that you can then position these needles um, to get the sun in that position, and then you can tell exactly what the, the altitude of the, of the sun is. Mm -hmm. And in terms of making sure it's lined up properly, they usually have some way of measuring where the center is directly below the dot. Uh, yeah, they would often have like a crosshair or something there. And the other thing is, is by holding it up here, the thing, it hangs by its own weight, so mm -hmm. it's always kind of hanging vertical. Okay. Um, so this was a, a used by uh, ships, uh, navigators or, or mariners, um, and this one's from 1608 in Portugal. Uh, this device is a much more sophisticated piece of apparatus, and we actually have one here. This, is, this one belongs to Miss Russell, and it's the same, uh, pretty much the same as the one in the diagram. Uh, it has a ring at the top again, so you hang on to it, uh, and then it has these dials that rotate, and it has a pointer on the back that you can adjust uh, so that you line it up to the sky, and then you read the information off the front. And it's, it's really quite uh, sophisticated and complicated. Uh, there's, we've linked to a video. It's, it's at the, the yeah, bottom the here. It's on the PowerPoint. But it's also the link in the notes uh, afterwards, so you can uh, watch that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, you notice how the, the, the grid on this is, is all kind of weird and, and distorted. distorted. Um, we can actually simulate that. What they're trying to do is, is map the the dome, like a 3D sky, yeah. onto a flat surface. And we can actually kind of simulate that in Stellarium. See, if we, we pull back like that and get a nice wide field view of Stellarium, we can see that same thing with a curved surface of the ground and look at these lines of the sky um, in this kind of warped grid. And that's exactly the same pattern that, that appears on the, on the panel here. Right. I can actually... I don't know how well that'll show, but it's the, sa it's the same as the uh, the distortion we did when we were mapping the star coordinates. But rather than have it split up, they kept it as one big circle. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, the thing would be ginormous. <laughs> yeah, huge. Okay, this is another astrolabe. It's called a clock. It's the um, the astronomical clock in the old uh, town square in, in Prague. It's actually my favorite clock on yeah. the planet, and I'm nerdy enough to have a favorite clock. <laughs> and this is on a clock tower, so it's massive. It, it is, and it's old. The, the mechanism on this clock actually predates Galileo, so it doesn't use a pendulum, Ooh. which is kind of cool. But it's the same as an astrolabe. It, it marks the ground and the positions in the sky. Uh, it has the, the time around the edge, so you can use it as a clock if you can figure out how to read it. <laughs> Uh, and this disc here is the ecliptic, and uh, notice all those symbols on the yeah. ecliptic. Yeah, those are the astrological symbols for the, you know, the astrology, sorry, the astrology signs, so you know, Virgo, Capricorn, Pisces, things like that. And if you can read the symbols, you know which ones are which. Right. And the reason those are there, of course, is because those are the constellations that the sun passes in front through, of right. over the course of the year, right? And so here's the sun. Uh, and actually, here's the moon up here. This tracks the moon as well, uh, and it actually rotates and, and shows the phases, the phases of the moon. Yeah. And then, I don't know if you can see it terribly well, but there are these little skeletons up here. Uh, and when it, when it rings on the hour, those little skeletons ring little bells and wave their lanterns around and stuff. It's kind skeletons of were big in medieval architecture. This is a, is a navigation device. You've probably seen people using this in, in movies. Uh, it's called a sextant, and the reason it's a sextant is because it's one-sixth of a circle. Yeah, the wedge. Yeah, so there's, a, there's ones that are also a quarter of a circle that are called a quadrant, yeah. there's ones that are an eighth of a circle called an octant, and so on. And this actually, uh, again, there's a, there's a video uh, from the Galileo Museum that, that shows how this works, but there's, there's a, a, a half mirror here, and so when you look through this little viewfinder, this little, it's a little mini telescope, yeah. actually, 
you can see simultaneously the horizon and some and star, so, yeah. right? So it kind of bounces around a little bit and you can, you can position it very precisely to line the image of the star up with the, the image of the horizon. Yeah. And then you can very precisely measure that, that difference. Yeah, the idea was uh, if you were looking, say, like at, at during the daytime and looking at the sun, you would actually bring the sun down to the horizon. And once you got it there, you could measure the angle, and that would tell you location and time. Yeah, which is pretty cool. I just remembered, uh, I have, uh, I can see this, but um, I have an astrolabe on my iPhone. Science geeks, that's us. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, uh, I think that's it for this presentation. Yeah. So um, have a look at the notes and the, uh, the videos that went go along with this. And uh, join us again in part three.